So over 24 hours after the embarrassing annihilation down at the Emirates Stadium, I am still really upset. Um, properly, properly upset over it. The fact that so many of them players decided that it was just a walkabout rather than actually we could have gone third, that hurts as a fan. And, you know, all day today I've seen people arguing with each other. You know, some people are hypocritical. They call out players but then don't call out other players. How about let's stop sitting on the fence. Let's stop dressing it up because a player might be your favourite and you give them a free pass. Let's say it as it is. Let's not sit here and dress this up. That was an absolute shambles yesterday and that could potentially have cost us fourth in the league this season. I know we're still currently sat fourth and Chelsea have got a game against Man United, which is going to be key. But let's all remember here, in a few days' time, we are going to Wolverhampton Wanderers. The same Wolverhampton Wanderers that have taken apart pretty much every decent-sized team in the league this season. We ain't going to have that easy. Let's be real. That was a game yesterday we had to win. And if we don't get fourth, we've only got ourselves to blame. And personally, I've said it all season. I don't care if we get fourth. I genuinely do not care if we get fourth. I don't care if we get third. I don't care if we get fifth. Fifth was my target at the start of the season. The squad we have been left behind by the previous regime is not good enough. And all day today, I have seen people saying it will be a miracle if we get top four with this squad. They're the same people that were saying we were left in a healthy position by the previous regime. So what is it? Is it a good squad and we're in a healthy position? Or are they not good enough and it's a miracle we get top four? How about say it as it is? Let's stop bigging up these players because they're genuinely not good enough. That is the facts of the matter here. They are not good enough. The majority of this squad would not get into any top side in Europe, let alone in England. So let's just start saying it as it is. Let's start marking players properly and let's stop sitting on the fence just to keep everyone sweet and everyone in favour and not upset anybody. When the reality is, you're just lying to yourself. So, here goes. Let's go with some proper player ratings, my personal player ratings, my honest opinion of what I witnessed yesterday down at the Emirates. We'll start with Bernd Leno. He conceded three goals yesterday. All three of them he got very close to saving. All three of them were not his fault. All three of them were shoddy defending from set pieces from our defence. And... I don't personally blame him for conceding three goals. What more could the geezer do yesterday? I thought other than that, he kept the score down. There, um, there was a double save he, um, he made from, I think it was one of their midfield. I think it might have been Kuwati. Um, he made a great double save from him. I genuinely thought they'd score that as well when it came back to him. How he scrambled across and saved that. Unbelievable save. And he's made some good saves this season. And again yesterday, it weren't his fault we conceded him three goals yesterday. I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. I thought he was one of the better players in our starting 11 and subs yesterday. Um, on to that shambolic defence I just mentioned. Let's start with Cole Jenkinson, our right back for the day. Um, I'll be honest, I think that was the only mistake we made in terms of starting 11. Because the Giza's has never been good enough for Arsenal Football Club. Um, and people are probably sitting there going, yeah, but Mohamed Elneny played and, and Grindosi played. There's a reason they played, and I'll come on to that in a minute. But Maitland-Niles, as, as we all know, is not a right-back. Yes, he's done fantastic as right-wing-back this season, but he is not a right-wing-back. I'm hoping he makes that position his own. But this guy's still a rookie. This guy's still training and still learning the position. And the fact that he is miles better than somebody who knows the position and has played at this football club for eight years too long... He shouldn't have been here in the first place. Let's be real, Jenkinson. He is not good enough. And yesterday, he was hooked again at half-time and instantly we look better in that position. It's no coincidence that he gets hooked off and we look better in that position. So for me, that was the only mistake I think Emery made in terms of starting eleven. Um, but, like I said, I will come on to that in a minute in more in depth in terms of midfield. But Jenkinson yesterday, 2 out of 10, not good enough. Let's go on to the opposite side, Kalazanak. Again, I said it in my review after the game. I've said it on um, social media for weeks and weeks and on this platform. This guy, if he could cross a ball, would be a top, top wingback. 
Fact is, he can't cross a ball. Every single ball that geezer crossed in yesterday either hit their first man, which was one Basaka, or went into the upper tier of the clock end or the north bank. What is he doing? Seriously, this is a guy that is apparently a real absolute warrior. The tank. More like Thomas the tank. Useless. One out of ten. Can't defend, can't cross. What is he on the pitch for? Anyway, let's go on to the three centre-backs. We'll start with a better one out of the three of them. Let's go with Koscielny. Um, I don't think he covered himself in glory, I must admit. And we all know he's not a leader. This is a man who cries when his kids take the mick out of him last season because we were losing games. This is our captain. Cries because his kids bully him. Come on, man. Although he has been really good in recent weeks, I don't want to go too deep on him. Um, I don't necessarily blame him yesterday. Um, I think that he was up against it when he's playing with the likes of Mustafi and Mavropanos next to him. I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. I think that's a fair score. It was an average performance from him. And he looks so much better when we've got Monreal and Socrates next to him. So again, I can't really blame him. It wasn't his fault we conceded three goals. On to Mavropanos. Another one. Hooked. Taken off the pitch. I've seen thousands upon thousands of Arsenal fans over the last six months. Give Mavropanos a go. Stick him in. We don't know what we're missing. He's brilliant. Yesterday showed exactly why he doesn't play football matches for this football club. He is not good enough. I don't care whether he's just come back from a massive injury. I don't care if he's only a kid. There is a reason that two different managers at this football club have not played him week in, week out, or even took him on away trips, or even sat him on the bench for games. He is not good enough. End of story. I'm going to give him a 2 out of 10 for yesterday. Shocking performance. On to the clown of the day. Mustafi. Need I say any more about this geezer? I said it all yesterday. I don't even want to go on a mad rant about this bloke. He's an absolute fool. He is a clown. And I don't want him anywhere near this football club next season. If he's still here next season, I am going to be fuming. This club needs to get him out of this club first. On the first day of the window, he needs to be binned. Minus 10. Shocking player. Always has been. And people used to go, do you remember how good that, you know, Koscielny and Mustafi are? Look at them. They've gone 20 games unbeaten. Kostafi. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Anyway, let's get on to the midfield pairing. We'll start with Mohamed El Nenny. Now, I've seen so many people blaming Mohamed El Nenny for yesterday. I've also seen them blaming Lucas Torreira. Not Torreira, I'm lying. Guendouzi, Matteo Guendouzi. I've seen people blaming these two people for us losing the game. Okay, explain to me then, leave it in the comments section, how all three of our goals came from set pieces. How did they, how did they affect them goals how did, how did it come from their errors how did it come from them not marking their man because all three of them goals came from dead ball situations where our three centre backs mainly two of them centre backs by the way not Koscielny so much but the other two did not do their jobs properly so can somebody explain to me what exactly they did in terms of them costing us the win yes going forward they were shocking yeah let's have it right they were shocking yesterday but do we expect them to be world-class players? Do we expect them to turn up and do something that we know they can't do? We've known for years Mohamed El Nenny passes backwards and sideways. So why do people suddenly think he's going to start jinking past players and feeding through balls? Come on, man. Wake up. Both of them, shocking. Guendouzi, headless chicken yesterday. Seriously, get him out on loan next season. I thought he's been really good at the start of the season. The last couple of months, that guy has hampered our campaign and he's been an absolute liability. I want him on loan next season. Both of them get a 2 out of 10. Not good enough. And that's only because um, they can't be to blame for the defensive side. Had they been to blame for the defensive side of the game, they would have been marked down as well. 2 out of 10 just because the fact that they turned up and they didn't do anything any different to what I expected them to do, which was next to nothing. Anyway, Mesut Ozil. Um, I said in my review after the game, I thought he played pretty good, to be fair to him. Yes, see, I can praise a player when they play well. Hence, no agenda. I say it as it is, as I always do. And I thought Mesut Ozil played pretty good. He got the goal. Great finish, where he kicked it into the ground again. He's done that two or three times this season. Nice finish. 
Um, he was dropping deep to try and get the ball, try and start attacks. Um, he had some nice passes, especially in the first half. I think he faded a little bit in the second half, especially when we got back to 3-2. That's where I wanted to see him kick on a little bit. But it didn't happen, not just for him, but for everyone on the day, really. But I think he was one of our best players yesterday, and I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. He got a goal, he worked his arse off, and it weren't his fault that we conceded three. He was tracking back yesterday. He was doing the donkey side of the game. So fair play to him because that's what I want to see from him as well as the attacking side. And he did both yesterday. So I can't criticise him if I'm being completely honest. Um, on to our two strikers. I can criticise both of them though. Um, Bamiang. I've seen people giving this guy so much praise for yesterday. Sorry, did I miss something? Genuinely, what did I miss? Because other than him, jinking around two players, passing the ball, it looping up and him volleying it in the bottom corner, what exactly did that guy do yesterday to affect that game? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And not only that, he has done this umpteen times this season. Not just at home, but away as well. He ghosts so many games. I see a stat today, and I'm not great on stats, but... He has missed 20 big chances this season. And he's still top of the goal scoring charts. Unbelievable. I don't get it. I don't get how he is still top scorer when he misses so many big chances and ghosts so many games. But I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10 for the fact that he scored a goal which gave us all hope. He got us back in a game from a brilliant bit of play. Other than that, I thought he was shocking. 4 out of 10. Um, on to Lacazette. Another one. What did he do yesterday? Yeah, he ran around a lot. Didn't really do anything. Didn't really affect the game. I know he, he created the goal for Ozil. I know that he, um, he was tracking back a little bit, but he weren't tracking back with purpose. He was spending half the game having a go at everyone else. Um, I don't think that was a great performance from him. But again, he did work hard. So I'm going to give him a five. And, it, and when I say he worked hard, I mean he ran around a lot, which is more than most of the numpties on the pitch did yesterday. He was running around without much purpose, if I'm being completely honest. But it was an average performance from our striker. Um, the other striker, like I said, that was a below average performance and he's done it way too often. And people will go, yeah, but you've only marked him a couple better than this player and that player. Listen, I expect my big players to turn up in big moments of big games. He did that once in 90 minutes. The other 89 minutes plus stoppage time, he ghosted it. That is why he's getting a four. Other players that have got lesser score than him, I expect them to be crap. I expect them not to turn up. But I expect them to do better than they did yesterday. So that's why they've got their scores. Because like I said, I say what I see. On to our substitutes. Alex Awobi. As soon as this guy came onto the pitch, we instantly looked better. That's not an agenda. That's not me rating him and saying he's the best thing in the world. That is exactly what I see yesterday. He came onto the pitch, along with Maitland-Niles, who I'll score in a minute, and we instantly looked better. We were on top until Mustafi did his brain-dead move and let them go and score. And the fact that every time Awobi got the ball, something nearly happened, and I say nearly, it didn't quite happen, it was nearly, nearly moments, but he sent Wambasaka back the other way, which is something that Kalasnak weren't doing. So... For me, I'm going to give him a six. I don't think he was fantastic, but I do think he was above average. So a straight six. Lucas Torreira. Um, a minute after he came on, we conceded the third goal. Again, not his fault. Don't think he had a great deal of um, things to do in the game in terms of tackling and, and running forward, whatever. He didn't really affect the game. He didn't get into the game. He made a couple of tackles here and there. Nothing fantastic. The game was dead and buried, let's be real. Even when we got back into it at 3-2, we never looked like we were going to score other than a Wobie's chance that, by the way, he should have buried. But I'm going to give Torreira a four. I don't think he was great. He was below average. We move on. On to Maitland-Niles. Another one who can walk off of the pitch saying he played well. Only a few of them can. Ozil, Leno, him, maybe a Wobie. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give Maitland-Niles a seven. For all the times Kalazanak was trying to whip balls in and hitting the front man, every time Maitland-Niles got the ball, he whipped a good cross in. And then where were our strikers? Oh yeah, they weren't in the box. And people want to say they have no service. Well, where are they when crosses are going in the box? Seven out of ten. Excuse me. 
There is no man of the match for me because I, I can't give a man of the match when we've been bantered at home three two. So seven out of ten for Leno, seven out of ten for Ozil, seven out of ten for Maitland Niles. You decide who's man of the match. Leave it in the comment section down there. Um, Unai Emery, um, like I said, with the team with the team lineup, I get why he picked that team. Ramsey out, Xhaka out. Lucas Torreira's had a thigh injury, I think, or um, a groin injury, one of the two. And he's been in the red. He's been in the red zone that we kept hearing loads last season, by the way. But it was a risk to start him. So do you start him and then he's injured for the rest of the season? Then you've got Ramsey out and Torreira out for the rest of the season. I wouldn't have risked it either. I can see why he picked that midfield yesterday. What else could he have done? Maybe he could have gone to a back four. Maybe he could have started Mkhitaryan. Maybe he could have started Denis Suarez. Was he injured? Who knows? Um, maybe he could have started a Wobie. But I couldn't see anything else he could have done there other than put Maitland-Niles in for Jenkinson. Maybe change to a back four instead and play a left back at centre back. But let's not all sit here and pretend we weren't all crying last season when we were playing a left back at centre back and a left back, a left back at right back and a right back at central midfield. So let's not all sit here and be hypocrites and say we should have a left back playing at centre back. Come on, man. Anyway, I'm going to give Emery a three out of ten. And the only reason he's getting a three is because he changed it at half time and I thought we looked instantly better. We got back in the game and then shocking defending again. As for the fans, I'm going to go with a straight five. I see loads of them leaving at home, like five minutes to go. As soon as the ball comes up, five minutes stoppage time, it's like a fire drill. We're still in the game, albeit we didn't look like we were going to score, but we are still in the game. It's a Sunday afternoon. It's a bank holiday weekend. Why are you rushing off home? I genuinely don't get it. But each to their own. Fair play to them all that went. I didn't bother. I had a nice Sunday roast with the family and I enjoyed my Sunday until Arsenal started playing. Anyway... That's my player ratings. Let me know your player ratings. Leave them all in the comments section. Was there a man of the match? Can you score a man of the match? Do you agree with my ratings? Um, leave it all in the comments section. Let me know. Anyway, until my um, press conference reaction and my preview for the Wolverhampton Wanderers game, which should be, yeah, quite fun. Um, yeah, I'm out of here. Laters, peeps.